Hello, everyone. AMG Hobby Talk. We are back for episode number 18. Fearless Leader is off on assignments. So we've got Steve, collector of the scallops, collector of the people. First of all, hello. How are you? Fantastic. Excellent. And Blair is back from his previous assignment. Blair, did you find Moose and Squirrel? <laughs> I did. Excellent. Excellent. See, no a lot idea. of you don't know. We had a very important assignment for Blair. He needed to find and capture Moose and Squirrel. And I was hoping... With all that time we gave you, we were hoping that, you know, we'd have some results. So we'll talk a little bit about some not related things to that. We're going to talk about a few new products coming up in the store. We've got some nice stuff that came in the shop as well that we'll be able to share with you, including a Connor Bedard card that'll play into kind of our discussion a little bit about the OPG. We did talk about that a little bit last week. So this will give us a chance to kind of play into that again as well. And uh, we also, as usual, we've taken some of your feedback. I'll read a couple of bullet points and then also we'll it'll be something we'll think about and defer to next week. Uh, but it is a good idea suggestion. And again, we do appreciate the suggestions. So I do mention that's a very important thing off the top. First thing I want to share showcase, though, and we'll start off with this will be uh, something that we'll talk about uh, over the coming weeks. And I'll keep reminding everybody, we do have a trade night and a card show coming up at the end of the month. So I want to kind of share that with you once again, just in case you haven't seen it. So here's a little flyer that we talked about previously. So the trade night is going to be on Friday, February the 23rd. It is going to be at the card shop from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And you guys can check out and go pop in the shop. You can meet the collector of the scallops and you can meet Blair and everybody at the shop and also hang out uh, a lot of fun and a lot of different opportunities to go and hang out and trade and buy cards and enjoy the environment. So you've got that going for you. And then the following day, you've got the card show at the new location. So that is February 24th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at 7101 Chibucto Road, the old Sears outlet. So just something to bear in mind. So those are the two things coming up at the end of the month. We will remind you as we go along. So it's good just to give you the dates again. It is at the end of the month. Last Friday of the month is the trade nights. And then we've got the card show on the Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Carlos, can I just add one thing to that as well? Sure. Um, since we moved to our new location, um, we're now responsible for like the setup and tear down of the tables. Mm -hmm. So um, not asking everyone to do it, but uh, especially uh, when the show ends on the Saturday, if if there's a few people hanging around, if they don't mind, uh, you know, helping us tear down a little bit, whether it's move some tables or or even yeah. clean up your specific table, uh, any little uh, bit helps. Um, if not, uh, Blair will be awfully sore when he comes into work on Monday. So, uh, yeah, and I think, you know, whatever, however many tables, 160, 170 tables, uh, to just have a handful of people doing it, um, you know, we definitely would appreciate any any help that we could receive. And last show, there was some, uh, you know, some good fellow dealers and collectors that did stick around. But uh, it'd be nice to see some other people volunteer as well, because uh, we're all in this together. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Good. Uh, good to know there, Steve. So now what we'll do is we'll touch on a couple of products that are coming in. So we do have a little list. So for uh, one more that we'll be talking about a little bit more is going to be the Upper Deco Peachy. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute because that is one that is now in the shop and we've had a chance to get a little exposure to it. I've checked out some of the stuff on eBay. Some of the stuff has been going on for it and we've gotten some very good prices for some of the Connor Bedard, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, we've got a couple of other products that we'll talk about. First one was a 2024 Top Series 1. So flagship tops, if you're familiar with it, you know how this one works. And uh, if... You know, you're not sold on the fact that it is, you know, a legacy brand, top flagship. Uh, then, of course, uh, I won't play the clip for you now. It might come up as a YouTube short on the channel, but uh, Blair gave a ring endorsement of the new design. Uh, very enthusiastically uh, in favor of the 2024 top Series 1 design. I'm, I'm sure there were some nicer cards in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the one that... Ringing endorsement. Good ringing endorsements mm. uh so we've got that coming in uh so in terms of supply steve uh 2024 series one uh, uh quite a fit, quite a bit of it a modest amount of it how, how, how much do you guys uh think you're gonna be getting uh it's a smaller allotment i'm not mm -hmm. sure why okay. but it is what it is um we'll okay. probably put a limit on this as well at least okay. for the first week that way um you know whoever wants to get one can come in and then after a week if you want to come by every box we have go right ahead but uh, you know, the first week or so, we want to give opportunity to uh, to those that might uh, you know might like a box. But yeah. definitely don't wait on it. I I suspect in the first couple of days it will be gone. Yeah, and it seems like uh, we've been doing that on the last few products. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we we did it on uh, series one hockey, and and you know, not the 
not to make anybody mad here that wants to come and, and, you know, buy multiple, multiple boxes, but like, just like Steve said, the reason for it is we're trying to spread it out so that, you know, somebody that's working, you know, days or something can't get in until the weekend, at least they can get a box. And that's our only reason for kind of limiting it is just to spread the wealth, right? Just to let everybody have a chance that wants to buy a box. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been asked Oops. a few you know, like over, you know, how come, how come I can't buy more than, you know, four or whatever? That's just the reason why we're just trying to spread it around. So, yeah, sounds fair. Sounds good. And we'll, the we'll next probably one start doing that as well um, with, you know, with a lot of products is we'll put like a time limit, like, hey, the first week, you know, it's it's two per customer, four per customer. Uh, that way, customers know they've got a set amount of time to get in and then, you know, after that week's up, uh, every man for himself. And if you if you want to buy us out, buy us out. But uh, yeah. I kind of like the last couple of products. Um, we've stretched it out, and yes, some people are disappointed that they can't, you know, buy buy several of something. But um, also, you know, when you see that, you know, kid come in with his mother and and get that box of a peachy because he couldn't get in during the week because he's in school. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of why we do it. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. So next one here that we're going to talk a little bit about is going to be clear cut hockey. Now this one specifically, and I'll share a little bit from cardboard connection. We're still waiting for them to get fully back up to speed, but they do have some screenshots and some pictures, some images that they do share on this one. And also I'll include a link to the cardboard connection site for you guys. If you want to check out some of the pictures and images. So this one actually combines two different years. So as you can see from the logo there, so folks on the audio version, the logo includes 21, 22, 22, 23. So they actually combined two years with a clear cut, which is good. Uh, it's something we talked about before we hit record because uh, the whole two year thing is starting to get a little bit old. It'd be nice to have a little bit of these combination things, you know, ha do a little bit of a mix, uh, combine the two things and get us some of these products so we can get back up to present day. That way we don't have to play this weird, well, this one has this rookie class. This one has this rookie class. And you got to pay attention to the year. Otherwise, you'll lose track of where you are. So from a product standpoint, one of the key things about ClearCut is that uh, you're getting one in case card per box. So it is very much a feast or famine kind of product because, you know, whatever you got in there is what you got in there. So you're not going to be able to spread it out. A lot of autographs that you got in terms of legend autographs, base rookie autographs. And we'll take a look at a couple of examples here. So this one here is an example of a Ovechkin autograph in a high gloss design based on upper deck. And you've got your duty exclusive 65 or less high gloss 10 or less. Well, out of 10. And then the one of one versions. And you can see if you've seen what the upper deck design looks like, this is basically what it looks like, but obviously autographed and numbered. So in your base autographs, you got your base, you got your UD exclusives. As I said, it's out of 65, 35 or 15 UD high gloss is out of 10 and the one of ones. The legend autographs have tier one and tier two, which is one in 30 boxes or one in 60 boxes, depending on the tier. And the exclusives, high gloss and one of one, same. And for the rookies, it's rookie autos, one in five boxes. Exclusives, high gloss and one of one. So they kept it consistent in terms of the stylings. You do have your UD Canvas rookie debut. So on a UD Canvas card, this is a mock-up, but I would say Canvas is probably going to look pretty good, especially if you do use a paint pen, kind of as they show in the example here. So this is an example of one that Steve mentioned when we, before we hit record was a clear cut pride. So you've got a Wayne Gretzky pride card and a lot of these are kind of acetate. So you do have a little bit of a see-through element on a lot of them, which can look really good with the autograph if it's placed well. And I've seen a lot of good examples of this over the years. So that's something to bear in mind. Yeah. Here we've got a retro inspired signature vintage views. So this is playing off of the SPX design, um, yeah. which can look really good on this kind of a thing. It's got the retro throwback a little bit from the late 90s to go along with a design, and then you're putting an autograph on. I think it's a good combo. Did you want to add anything to that one, Blair? Yeah, on that one, I, I, I like these, actually, uh, with the die cuts. And, and um, I think the, the, the legends they have, like it's one in 240 boxes or something. So that's, that's going to be an equal. This is a product I would have, back in my opening days, I would have kind of loved these products. Um, I don't know about the price point, but uh, I just love chasing the legends and, and veteran guys. But um, yeah, and then coming up, I guess with the um, with the uh, the retro rookies, they're they're really kind of doing a throwback over the years kind of thing. So that's kind of neat too. I like what they're doing there. But. 
Mm -hmm. And in that vein, so I'll quickly do a rundown again for the audio ver uh, folks. I'll do a quick rundown. So for their retro rookie rundown, here's what they've got. 2013-14 Ultimate Collection Rookies, 14-15 Young Guns, 15-16 SPA Future Watch Autograph, 16-17 Black Diamond Rookies Gems, 16-17 SPA Future Watch Auto, 1920 The Cup Base Rookies, 2021 SPA Future Watch, and 2020-2021 Ultimate Collection Rookies. <clears throat> so again, this is very much is a product that goes to the archive. It goes to the well of a lot of the background of a lot of Upper Deck products. So if you like some of these products and you like some of those designs, you will get a chance to be, have that included. And you also have 91, 92 Upper Deck autos. So if you got to have here, you're going to all the way throw back near to the beginning. So the second year of Upper Deck. So it is a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, some interesting ones. The mock-ups look all right. And it's one of those ones where uh, if you enjoy that kind of product, it is interesting. But as I said, with one having one in case card per box, it is a feast for family product. So, you know, you're going to open it up and you get what you get. That, that That's going to be it for you. Yeah. And Carlos, this, this one, actually, we do have a good supply of it. So we will be more lenient with, uh, you know, the amount of product uh, customers can buy. So it's a good product for breakers and guys at Raz and things like that. Um, so, yeah, definitely can come in and, uh, you know, get an abundant supply of this product. Um, especially since Upper Deck comes out in a few weeks, we just want to get it and move it. So our prices will be uh, pretty much impossible to beat, I would say, on this product. Very good, very good. So what we're going to do then is, like I said, the other product was the brand new OPG with the Conor Bedard cards. But before I get into that, we're going to finish up with that one because obviously that product is in the store and we have a little experience with it. So we're going to touch on that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about a couple of items that came in the shop that you shared some images with me. So I'm going to start sharing those. We'll talk about them a little bit. And we will include one of the Bedard as one of the cards on here. But there's a nice mix match of a couple of different things. So I think that's a, kind of a fun combo. Mm -hmm. So let me start off by showing a couple of these things here. So first one, we've got a 71-72. We've got kind of a large version, a small version. I can see at the bottom we got five of 36 cards. So who wants to tell me exactly what it is that I'm looking at here? Uh, sure. So I'll, being, being a vintage guy, I know how tough this card is to find. Um, you know, to the average viewer, like I said, it just looks like a smaller version. But, uh, yeah. yeah, 1971 Bazooka Bubblegum. Uh you know, on the box of bubblegum, they would put three of these uh, small cards on the back of a bazooka box. And they came in panels, and there was 36 of them, and they are unbelievably rare. Um, I haven't paid much attention, but for the longest time, there was only one known complete set of this. Um, there's, there may be more now, but uh, my many years of doing this, very rarely do I come across bazooka cards. Uh, mm -hmm. So when a customer walked in with this the other day, uh, I had to I had to take a picture of it. Yeah. He actually decided to keep it, and I didn't I couldn't blame him because he knew it was rare. But I think I got too excited, and mm -hmm. uh, he felt better about the card when he left. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I love love seeing oddball uh, vintage items like this. Super tough. And yeah. I, Bob Yor would be the uh, you know the oh. big card amongst the thirty six cards. And like I said, they came in little three card panels. So a lot of times when you find them, they've been hand cut. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing that I'll note. So if you are watch, if you are listening to the audio version of it, uh, you should definitely Google this one and look it up or check out the video version. Because if you if you see that, you'll be able to see an example of the normal size 7172. The, the one we've got here is an Henri Richard. So you've got a normal version of 7172, and then you've got the other one right beside it. So you can see kind of the compare and contrast. And you do see a couple of the lines where the cuts are. So you yeah. can actually tell the little jag the little lines indicating exactly where you should cut. And then at the bottom it says number five of 36 cards. So kind of playing into what Steve was saying, it indicates it. But you know, it's a good representation of the normal size version of it, but uh, shrunk down a little bit with some of those extra features that we talked about. So a very interesting piece. So here is an example of the brand new product. We got the OPG, and then we got the Marquee Rookie. Now this one, I looks like um, this one looks like it's actually a little bit of a chromium one. So I think there is a the chromium version of it. I haven't looked all the way through the checklist, but uh, this is a Marquee Rookie, and it is a Connor Bedard. I guess kind of a green one, a little bit of chromium. Uh, do either one of you know a little bit about this one? Is this the card Cherry sent you? Yes, that is the one. Oh, I was, 
Yeah, we just, it was brought to our attention late last night. Uh, a customer, I guess, posted on our our uh, email that, uh, you know, it was the greatest pull of his life. Yeah. So he, he was tickled to death. Um, it's what? numbered out of 33. So I'm assuming that's probably a big card. I haven't checked comps or anything on yeah. it, but... Uh, we love well, it. I, I can tell you the I can tell you the out of forty nine, uh, the out of forty nine Connor Bedard went for almost twelve hundred US. So the out of thirty three would be a little bit better. So oh, yeah, we we love it when customers uh, pull big cards in the store yeah. and, and let us know about it. Just on another note of a Connor Bedard pull, Steve might remember uh, there was a gentleman who came in the other day and opened uh, opened another box and um, he actually got I think it was one of the. Um, Sorry, the name's gone for me now. <laughs> anyway, it was one of the retro, um, Opeachy Premier, sorry, Opeachy Premier red uh, Connor Bedard. And I think that was a, a chromium one numbered uh, 75. So there's been some uh, some uh, some cool cards coming out of these things. Yeah, so I can confirm here. I just pulled it up here on Carbo mm -hmm. Connection. So same thing. I'll include a link to, to it for you so you can check out the breakdown. So this one is the Rainbow Foil Green. So if the out of 33, it's the rainbow foil green, which is which explains a little bit of the reflectiveness with it. I, like I said, I'm not too familiar. I'm familiar with Opeachy in the abstract, but I haven't specifically dug into this one. But just looking at the list here of the all-star marquee rookie parallels, you got your rainbow foil out of 350 in hobby, uh, your rainbow foil black out of 100 in hobby, your rainbow foil green, which is what we're looking at here with Connor Bedard out of 33, and then rainbow foil gold, which will be a big one. Uh, you know, we talked mm -hmm. about the whole one of one young gun. That'll be obviously a monster when it comes out. Uh, that'll be for series two, but rainbow full gold, you know, example of this, but in gold, a one of one would still be a massive card out of OPG, a relatively affordable product, all things considered. So a couple of things to bear in mind. But uh, as I said, there are a lot of different versions of the of the inserts, but then also parallels. I want to say there's over 30 different Connor Bedard potential cards that you could pull, including inserts, parallels, and a bunch of different versions that you can check out. S speaking of what Blair was talking about, there is the Opeachy Premiere. So what I'll do now is I'll stop sharing this one for a second. I'll come back to it. And then mm -hmm. I'll share with you from the Cardboard Connection site. So this is the Opeachy Premiere that you're seeing here on the screen. So these were one in six packs. And then you've got a pattern foil board. So those are the ones numbered to 75. And this is one of the ones that was featured, Marky Rookie. So there's a lot of them. So bottom line, I'm not going to go a full breakdown on this one, but there are definitely a lot of opportunities inside of this particular set. And it is something to bear in mind because I, it it's, gives the folks that want the Bedard cards the opportunity to chase something. Because right now, uh, as, as I was discussing in another venue, I think one of the things that's made it interesting is obviously it's helped a lot with the pricing early on that we just don't have that many options. If you want to collect Bedard and you actually want him in an NHL uniform, now this is one of the few opportunities. You actually want to get a real rookie in a base set, this one has it. And I can tell you, at least early, first week, uh, the Opeachy base card is going somewhere between 70, 80, almost 90 bucks yeah. US on eBay. So that will change as more cards come out because there is a retail as well. So the opportunity is out there for more people to pull them. But in the first week, early on, where people just really want to get their hands on one, uh, these are selling pretty strong. So we actually got a good combo of some interesting cards. So here we've got a 2013 Panini Prestige, uh, Kobe Bryant bonus shot, autograph, gold version. Uh, want to tell me a little bit about this one? Uh, yeah, just on Saturday, a, a gentleman came into the store with it. And for whatever reason, you know, we don't see much uh, Kobe stuff in Bedford, Nova Scotia. So when he walked in with this autograph out of 10, um, I knew it would be mine. Uh, the, the collector of the people came out of me and uh, it's one I, I paid a fair price for it. The market on everything's come down a little bit. Um, so I had to kind of explain that to him and showed him some comps, but uh, he was happy with what he got. And it's one of those uh, cards that I don't mind sitting on it for a while either till, till I get my price. Um, and I like seeing, you know, customers come in and seeing something new in the showcase and uh, you know, Anytime, like I said, you can get Kobe. It's uh, it, it's definitely an eyedropper. Very happy to have it in the store. Right on. And one thing, uh, if for folks that remember when the when the pandemic period was happening early on, uh, Kobe passed away right around the same time. Mm -hmm. And and what that did is it did this. It shot it shot the prices of everything Kobe and autographed Kobe, also straight through the roof because obviously he wasn't signing anymore, uh, for obvious reasons. 
but uh but like it, it went crazy now i will say because of because it went so crazy it has slid back a little bit since then but uh it's still higher than it was uh the baseline has increased on it so obviously exploded and then came back down but uh some stuff has held some value because obviously there will be no more autographs. He was still a fairly young man when he yeah. passed away, unfortunately. So uh, all those years, potentially of him signing things, a lot of the legends circuit and signing up products all over the place that never got a chance to happen. So at this point, I think the folks that like it, if you can get a Kobe auto and you're into that kind of thing, then you're still going to have to pay up for it. So that's something to bear in mind. So you go, uh, this is a Brad Hartland special here and we got a Bowman Chrome uh, Tom Brady. I will refrain from from my commentary. Uh, please, uh, if you want to interject here. Yeah, same sort of thing. Uh, guy came in the store. Uh, he actually wanted in a res. So okay. uh, w- w- he was happy with what we paid him, considering uh, you know the res might have cost him forty bucks to join. So again, very uh, competitive uh, on the price. It's not going to be a big money maker for us. But again, it's a nice card uh, to add to the store showcase. Um, and again, you know, people love looking at some of these higher dollar cards of, you know, future Hall of Famers. There you go. Seems fair. And that's in a Beckett 9.5. Uh, and you do have the subgrades on there. Uh, so 10 surface, which is pretty good for a Chromium yep. card. Uh, like I said, we'll talk, we'll maybe talk some nuances of grading later on. Uh, we'll, we'll save that for a future episode, but, um, anything, anytime you got a 10 surface on a chromium card, that's good because they can scratch and scuff. There are some considerations there with chromium cards, uh, centering in this case is the one subgrade that held it back, but otherwise, uh, it was strong enough to be a nine five. So pretty yeah. solid. Yeah. So now we're going to talk a couple of cup cards. So I'm going to go a little out of order that I've shown here because there's a couple different things I want to showcase here. So first one is signature materials. Uh, this is a March or so. Really nice patch on this one. Uh, so yep. this one's numbered to 99 on card autograph, which is great. But you got a really nice patch for the Las Vegas Golden Knights on this one. Yeah, that's super, super unique patch on that one. It really, uh, really uh, focuses your eye there. So, yeah, and on card auto on top. So it's mm-hmm. as it should be. And I still stand by my idea that Las Vegas would have been even further off if they had just gone with the Black Knights, because then it could have been the Monty Python skit, and it could have been, Tis Blood of Flesh Wound is a tremendous call. It would have been fantastic. With hockey, it's still my greatest disappointment in the NHL history that they did not take the obvious move. Golden Knights is fine, but I'm just saying, it could have been much better. So here we got a uh, Trevor Zegris. Uh, this is kind of a, a fold-out card. I, I remember this one, but I don't remember exactly what the subset is. I, it's a cool-looking card, I will say. Uh, I believe it's called, it's like, Rookie Player Plate. Player oh, plaque. Legend Player Plaque. Oh, yeah. Packs. I see it. Yeah. yeah. So this is a Rookie Player Plaque. Plaque. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's see that three times fast. Yeah. <laughs> and it's numbered to 35. Um, okay. One of the downsides, I guess, of the later release of the cup you know, if this had to come out a year or so ago when it, you know, should have, this probably would have been, you know, a fifteen hundred to two thousand dollar card. Yeah. Um, now, uh, unfortunately, Trevor's not playing very well, or at least his stats aren't uh, aren't showing that. So hmm. the card's very much dropped in value. But it's one of those I haven't given up on him yet. Yeah. So I've got it in the showcase. It's a li- the price I have on it's a little high, but mm-hmm. sometimes you don't mind sitting on a card. Plus there's a rumor that, you know, the Habs might be going after him. Trade. Um, yeah. I've been hearing that rumor circulate. So it might be one of those, if, if that uh, happened, obviously there'd be a little more demand for his card and uh, you know, maybe he'd be happy in Montreal and it would reflect in his play. But yeah, unfortunately the stats aren't there for Mr. Zegers this year, but it is a very nice, uh, very nice booklet. Very good. Very good. Now this one here, and we'll finish up with a one of one. That'll be the last one that'll show you. But this one here, this is the Jerome Ginla. It is the parallel of the base, I believe. And it is the autograph patch version. Now you, you have to see it in the video version to really get the full impact of this because mm-hmm. the patch on this one is tremendous. So it is number to eight. It is number eight of eight. It does have an on-card autograph there of uh, Jerome Ginla and a really nice multicolored patch with the Calgary. It looks like it's probably part of the horse. Uh, so you've got a lot of the different colors going on there. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, tremendous looking card just to start. Yeah, it's a beauty. And I like how they, with the patch, it appears like the patch would be from that style of jersey, like that mm-hmm. with that particular logo. So I like how they 
instead of you know throwing it on the retro Calgary Flames jersey and then have a a modern patch like they they got it right with this card and just with the gold and stuff yeah it's a, that was my favorite out of that lot I think this came as the same lot right Steve yeah. came out as yeah my favorite card as well and and uh, happy to report it actually went to the world's largest again the collector. So I, 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 I was about I was about to mention because I do follow him on Instagram. Yeah. So I saw that when you sent me the picture and then I looked on his Instagram and I saw it's like, hey, that looks familiar. I've seen that. So I'm oh, glad yeah. like again, I love it when a collector um, you know adds to their collection. So he he was thrilled to get it. And again, as soon as we saw that card, it just it just pops. Yeah. And uh, again, the you know super popular uh, player. Uh, in his day and still to this day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. 600 goal scorer, uh, one of the great scorers of his time. One of the great what ifs of uh, of professional hockey. I'll quickly touch on it because uh, being a Dallas star fan, he was actually drafted by the stars and he was part of the Joe Newendike trade. Now Mm -hmm. Dallas star fans are not going to complain because Joe Newendike was the con Smythe winner in the Stanley cup year. So we're not going to complain about it. But I would have loved the sliding door situation where what if we could have gotten the Joe Dewey Dyke trade done without trading away a Ginla? I would have I wouldn't have minded a couple of years of a Ginla on the wing with Vedano. I'm just throwing it out there. It would have been very again, it's not like he didn't score goals in the first place, but having a good playmaker to to, to set you up would have been yeah. it would probably would have extended Dallas's window of contention a little bit because then as Medano phases out, then here you go. You got another young guy who who was a great goal scorer already. It became one in Calgary. Yeah, they would have been interesting. Again, a great what if. It could have been it could have been an extended window of contention, Steve. I, I kind of wish we had been able to pull that one off, but I'm not gonna yeah. complain. They won, they won a Stanley Cup out of it. So no complaints there. And uh, I will mention, as I said, uh, the the collector here, I'm not going to out them on this in this venue because we didn't ask, but uh, they are out on Instagram. So if you're out on the Instagram worlds of the hockey and you see this card, then you'll know who, uh, who it belongs to. And he's a great collector of a good one. Big time. Last one here that I want to showcase, and this is one we talked about when we were talking about the cup some time ago. Uh, and this is where I think the show is at its best. The, yeah. concept, uh, the concept of it, the design. It needs to be autographed, and this one is certainly the case. So this is a Gary Cheevers, one-of-one one signatures from the show. So you've got the lovely design and everything, very artistic, but then you've got your spot there with the dark edge there where you can put it on a nice paint pen, and it pops right off the card. And it is the one-of-one one as well, so that's an excellent card there in this case. Yeah, and that one's currently uh, on our eBay store. Actually surprised we haven't gotten any offers on it, but uh, they will come uh, just yeah. a matter of time. <laughs> People will see it. If you, but, uh, a if big, you fan of big fan of Cheevers when I was a kid. Uh, being a goalie, I just you know every who didn't love that mask with all the stitches oh, on. It. Yeah, classic pose. Yeah, mm-hmm. love it. Yeah, so I would say a good choice a photo selection combined with the whole aesthetic of this particular card. If you like, if you're somebody who's into card aesthetics, this one has got that component. That's why I said the show was a good idea. My yeah. only uh, my only critique of Upper Deck is. Don't give me the show without the autograph because that defeats the whole point. Like, otherwise it loses a lot of its luster because it's like, no, this is a proper application. If you're going to do it, this is how you do it yeah. with the whole package. Otherwise you just you lose out on some of it, but that's a personal opinion. here. That's perfect. So that's some stuff that came in the shop, including some stuff that has already wound up in a couple of player collections. So that is excellent. Thank you all for sharing those. So what I want to do a couple of minutes here, we're right about the time that I wanted to shoot for in this episode, but I want to take a couple of minutes here at the end. If you want to share with me, uh, we talked about the OPG. Uh, we talked about the Connor Bedard chase, the fact that you've got you got a base card, a rookie card. You've got some nice parallels that are selling for a decent amount. Even the base card is selling for a decent amount. Uh, you did initially limit quantities. How have sales been on the OPG? Um, actually, better than expected. Yeah, I'm glad we did the. Uh, I'm glad we did the four per customer um, mm-hmm. to start. Actually, probably could have even gone smaller than that, but. Uh, Within 72 hours, we kind of looked at each other and we're like, we're, we're running out fast. So yeah. we're actually at one per customer now. And I can say there's only four boxes left. Yep. Um, so they'll be gone today. Uh, we do, we were able to secure a very, very small allotment mm-hmm. that should be coming yep. in tomorrow with our order. But again, it you know, within a day it will be gone and those will be uh, one per customer as well. Um, hmm. yeah, we'd like to get some more, but it kind of is what it is. But I, I think we might have another 
maybe another case coming. So uh, I think we'll keep, even though we've had to pay a little bit more to get it, I think we'll just keep it at the same price point and uh, hopefully satisfy a few more, you know, people looking to, uh, you know, buy a box. Well, I haven't seen stuff flying off the shelf like that since the last AEW product. Like it's just crazy. Yeah. Boom, flying off the shelves. Flying. Exactly. Very Boom. comparable. Flying. Exactly. It's basically the same. Uh, so no, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. I, I kind of, to be honest, I suspect it as much. That's why I wanted to validate with, with you guys. Uh, because realistically, uh, the, the, the key selling features that I just talked about, the fact that the Bedard chase is on, the fact that the price point for the product is still attainable for most people. It's not completely out of whack with the world and it's like yeah. it's not so far out of reach. That doesn't mean the Bedard card is going to be easy to pull. You're not going to get one per box. It's, that's not the deal because they are a little bit short printed and it's a 600 card base set. So even for the base card, you got to, it, it takes some boxes to get it. But even still, it's at least possible. And the fact that there is the retail side of it means it's there's still a possibility for people to get their hands on it that way as well. Now, I will say uh, what I cautioned earlier. Uh, there are going to be some very strong sell prices and we're seeing them. We're going to see some strong sell prices in the first couple of weeks, but then obviously as retail kicks in, more people get a chance to open it. Some of the base will come out into the market. Um, you know, don't go out of your way killing yourself to, to go and buy the first couple of singles at the highest price. They will settle back down a little bit. And as more products come out, that'll be, but if you can open a box and have some fun with it and you pull a nice card and everything, enjoy it. That's a, that'll be a fun experience. And there's a lot of different inserts and subsets and parallels that you can pull. So, I think if you're a, more of a set builder mindset, it's a pretty good set for that kind of thing. Yeah. I also, um, I think people are enjoying opening the packs more than I've mm -hmm. seen in a long time. Yeah. The thrill the thrill of pulling a Bedard. Because we actually have two Bedards in our showcase, like from the Opeachy set, and nobody's even inquired about them. They they want, they want to get the Bedard themselves. And uh, so at that price point, everyone's focusing on um you know ripping packs and and getting that thrill of, of pulling the bedard so we do have two in our showcase if anyone's out there and and needs one yeah 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 and I, and I will say that um kind of playing into that though it's i think unless they also pull do mvp which maybe they will and i think that probably they will that's the only other one that's kind of in the more reasonable price point it's mm -hmm. going to kind of go up from here uh, because yeah. we know the series two is going to be very aggressive when that comes out. That's going to be a big one. But then you just look at the other ones. SP Authentic is not going to be cheap. Uh, those are going to be pretty yeah. tough. And if heaven forbid the cup happens, I can't even imagine what's gonna, what the people are going to try to do with that one. Uh, so this is probably the last, other than maybe an MVP, as I said, this is kind of the last attainable kind of entry level product that is accessible to a lot of folks. And gives them a chance. If you would like to pull up a dart that way and on a reasonable budget, then this is probably the last product that kind of qualifies for that. Yeah. Some things to bear in mind. Yeah. So as we wind her down here a little bit, I will uh, put the little scrolling ticker there that includes the social medias, the Instagram, and also the website. So you can check that out. Uh, I did mention earlier that we always appreciate comments and feedback. Uh, I did touch on one comment here. I'll, I'll hit on a couple of high level points. I mentioned it to Steve. So maybe something that we'll think about here. Uh, it was uh, from Sean6378. I'm sorry the way the YouTube does the handles, but that's the best I can do. So it was kind of referencing the free appraisal thing that Steve was talking about, how sometimes people come in and they're not being completely serious about actually wanting to sell. They kind of just want it evaluated, kind of figure out a price point, and then, you know, thanks for your help, and then kind of taken off. But I was asking about the possibility of having a little bit of information about, quote, unquote, self-grading is kind of the way they phrase this. And it was more like having an understanding of maybe some of the nuances with some of the grading things. And what we'll kick around, we'll, we'll see if we can uh, put something together for you. It's going to be more along the lines of, you know, you're not going to go grade by grade because that's not reasonable. Also, there is some subjectivity to it, but that doesn't mean we can't give some uh, understanding on some nuances that you may want to be aware of. Like I mentioned earlier, chromium cards, they tend to, the surface is prone for scratching. Uh, the importance of centering. There are little things that you can still know. As a consumer, you don't need to understand down to the last fine detail how to grade, but you should be able to telltale certain specific condition issues that are going to tell you immediately. The moment you see this, it's not a mint card. The moment you see this, you know, get gem mint out of your mind because this flaw is, is going to knock it down a couple of notches. So we can still provide a little bit of insight on that because that'll at least help you have a ballpark. That way, at least you understand what you're looking at. And then the nuances from there uh, can go depending on a little subjectivity, depending on the card. Or you can send Blair on an expedition for Moose and Squirrel. Okay. And he can come back with a grade. Who knows? Some things to think about. 
So that'll be it for this this time around. Uh, thank you, Steve, Collector of the Scallops, Collector of the People. Appreciate you. Of course. Mm. And you should. <laughs> and I, I, I was, I was, that's kind of what I was hoping for. I, I was waiting. I was trying to give you an opportunity. Blair, you're here. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I yeah. feel like we're starting the show over again. We we almost are, we almost are Blair. Look, Blair, we got to make up for lost time because while you were off chasing gallivanting around, we were trying yes. to, we were trying to make up for the difference. So now now here you are, and we're trying to make up for it at the end. We wanted to give you an opportunity to give us a profound thought and statement to send us off on. <laughs> I'm actually doing this from Sherry's office. Uh, it's extremely warm in here. I don't know if anybody knows this, but yeah. You know. So that's my thought for the day. We need to work on uh, on our heating. I just assumed you were under all that pressure after that week off, and the, now now someone's like <sighs> yeah. under the, under the hot lights of the of the attention of the people. It's a little stressful. Mm. All right, I'll let him off the hook for now. But we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back to this. We'll revisit it. By the way, you might want to check out. I'll, I'll see if I can find that clip of him endorsing 2014 Top Series One. If I can find that clip, that'll that'll wind up on the YouTube channel at some point. So more videos coming up on the channel. More podcasts coming up. So we appreciate you again. If you want to leave some comments, again, I referenced Sean's comment here. So we're going to take some of that under consideration and see if we can provide something to at least assist with that. But yeah, if you've got comments or suggestions, feel free to do that. We also appreciate likes. And if you haven't already, if you could subscribe, we want to start bumping up the subscriber numbers. We've been making some good progress, but I'd like to see that continue. And if you, there's something you'd like to see or like to learn about, similar in the same vein as Sean, there's something you'd like some information on, please ask us because that gives us an opportunity. Last point I'll make for you is also, if there is something that's a little bit more pressing, a little bit more urgent, look at the Instagram, look at the website and use those contact points because that way we can get respond a little quicker. So leaving a comment is very good on the YouTube. We appreciate that. But you'll get a quicker response if you use one of the connection points that are available on this. So for Steve and Blair and myself, have yourselves a great week, and we will catch you in the next one.